Okay. Let's see here. Everything looks like it's in order, I hope. I tried to load up Minecraft last night and uh, couldn't figure out why it looked like shit and I gave up for a little bit and then I tried to go back again I was trying to do some Google searches husband was trying to help me and then we realized that Minecraft and Nvidia um, Nvidia tried to do something that Minecraft usually does and so settings I was changing in Minecraft weren't really changing to do what I wanted it to do because NVIDIA graphics card was overriding it or something and um, and then we realized that there was like a 3D option or something in the graphics card and we're like oh that's probably why Planet Zoo took forever to get it to not look like shit I haven't checked on Planet Zoo in a game yet to see if changing that fucked up all the settings and I have to redo them again oh <sighs> We'll find out. I might do that later today. So we are back with painting with wool, needle felting along with Bob Ross. We are on season three. We're following along with season three. If I could do these faster, I'd say we would follow all of them, but uh, I'm not that fast, so I don't know if we'll go back and do seasons one and two. Probably take a lifetime. <laughs> it's got a lot of stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that is the um, link to the full tutorial. You ever like get a fuzz or something on like the edge of your eyelashes and the light hits it just so and that's like all you can see out of the corner of your eye is this weird like fuzzy little blip. Well, it could be a reflection and not actually something on my eye. I'm trying to figure this out. I keep seeing it every time I go this way. It might be a reflection. Or it could be something touching my face somewhere and I just can't find it. Oh, that's annoying. Anyway, so there's the link to the full tutorial. Sorry. That's going to drive me insane today. I don't I think it's something that's not really there. I think it's just me seeing my eyelashes and they just look shiny today. Cuz I keep going to grab it and literally nothing is happening. And I'm feeling all around the edges of my face at least it's not really my eyelashes, that's something else near it. Pretty sure it's my eyelashes. Alright. Grr. Might be the way the light is hitting them. Because I'm not touching it. So, we have the link to it. Um, we're on season three of the Joy of Painting, like we've been following. We're on episode six. We've gotten as far as that.
Ow, ow, ow. Shit, hold on. Really, glasses? Oh, is that why I can see it? Oh, okay. I've got a couple of eyelashes that are curling down. And that is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the tips of them curling down. Okay. Well, that mystery has been solved. And now my glasses are stuck in the wire on my microphone. Or my headphones, excuse me. And then I had a slight freak out when I grabbed the mirror because I'm trying to look at my face and see what the fuck is going on with my eye and I'm seeing a weird reflection not a reflection but I'm seeing like a line extending out from my iris and I'm like what the fuck it was a reflection of the arm of my glasses or something behind me I took my glasses off and it vanished so it's not actually there Okay, I'm just trying to because my hands are not there we go. Didn't have quite enough friction on my hands yet. Alright, so now I had this in one position, right? And then I moved it. I'm trying to fill the space, but if I come down too far then that's not gonna work. Are you just being weird? You might just be weird, because I think the camera got bumped the other day. Alright, so let's get to work. We are working on putting in our sky. And then when we get this filled in, we'll be starting to put in our background trees. And then I've got some guidelines that we put in with pen. We don't have to follow them to a direct T, but just kind of approximate placement for stuff. And those will get covered up as we go along here, so I'm not hugely worried about them. They will vanish as we do some work and things. I am still working on editing the um, the other speed felt from episode five. That's gonna take me a while. Um, I'm only on to the second live stream and. Um, I think that live stream was like three hours and 15 minutes or something. I'm like at the two hour 55 minute mark on that one. That one's gonna take a while. Especially until I get faster using this um, software. Which I don't know if I'm going to. I found that it's easy to zone it out with this editing software so I will have times where I'm like fuck I just completely was not paying attention and um, I have to go back and uh, double check what section I was just doing to see if I missed where a cut should have happened <clears throat> excuse me sorry 
I mean, we'll get there. It's just not going to be a fast process. We lucked out. We actually didn't get any of the storms from yesterday. Everything seemed to form on the other side of us. It might have drizzled, maybe, but everything seemed to form either in the middle of Fayetteville or on the east side of Fayetteville and then kind of like came down just under us and like went through Fort Smith and places south. We were like in this little little no storm zone which was kind of weird but okay. I don't want the severe weather. We needed the rain though so I'm a little bummed about that. we didn't get any of the icky storms. So I do have some sad news for those that were following along with the desert city for Minecraft from way back when. Um, when the PC died, I lost my save file. <laughs> So that desert city that I had been working so hard on that we live streamed a few times, yeah, uh, I lost that save. I loaded in Minecraft and I was like, oh shit. And I lost our, our non-commentary game as well. where I was just chilling and playing. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't play the music in the background because Sony. I'm like, really? It's not even like it's... It's a mainstream artist singing this song. It's... I, I was just so mad. And it wasn't all of the tracks. It was just a couple of them. I guess it was a couple of the newer ones. And I was just like... You know, the game is not the same when you don't have the music running in the background every so often. So it annoys me. So that means I'm going to have to go through the free music library on YouTube. Stuff that's been deemed YouTube appropriate. And then that means even more video editing I'm going to have to do if we decide to live stream something. Or if I just decide to record it. I don't know. Next game I do, we might just stay in survival. And I might just turn um, raiders off and the wardens, because those are the ones that fuck my ass every time. I do not like those mobs. I always have a raid happen when I am not in a position to deal with them, and I've tried dealing with them multiple times. It seems like they just happen too soon, and I either have to hide underground and hope they eventually go away, or I have to dig a tunnel out. Or I have to log out. That's not fun. And I know some people love the possibility that, uh, you know, somebody might get wrecked with the creepers and stuff. And while I don't enjoy myself getting blown up, I, I do understand. You'd be like, ah, I destroyed it. So, you know. I do get that, but um, I did not know that you could turn on an option 
in the game rules for Minecraft that you could keep your inventory when you die. I did not know that. <clears throat> I was dicking around looking at... Oh, there goes my voice. <clears throat> I was dicking around trying to make a new map last night. And I was like, game rules, what the fuck is this? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, you can turn on your invent uh, this button and you won't lose your inventory everywhere when you die. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. I definitely saved one. Some aggravation. Of trying to gather up all your shit in a hurry. If you did die. I found that very fascinating. I did not know that option existed. <coughs> I used to play on Minecraft servers, but that wasn't very often. And I was always kind of hesitant to do so. I really only ever did it when the husband found one that he liked and settled into it for a little while. Because, you know, if the server sets, shuts down, you lose all your, your buildy stuff. We had a server for a long time. But then we couldn't afford to keep it going. <coughs> and of course my voice is going to pick now to to be an asshole. talk today. Talking is not allowed, I guess. <clears throat> See, my allergies didn't feel that bad when I woke up, but I guess that's not the case. Because now my ears are starting to itch. find my vintage heather floof ball and we're gonna have to refill this bag when we're done here we're not doing that on stream though that would be boring for you guys you guys don't need to see me sit here And fluff all of that. If I'm really bored one day, maybe I will do a prep video. I mean, I've already done a how I prep video, a short one. And I really can't do a, a pre-prep recorded one for all of the colors I'm going to be using. Because I already have them done. The only thing I do is like top off colors in between. I try to if it's a shade I don't have bagged already, I try to um, make sure that I get it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why? I liked it better when those kids stayed inside. So there's a child next door that seems to be having a fit outside. Constantly clicking the gate. Um, the, uh, like the gate handle lock and yelling. And I don't know why. 
because she's just standing there. And I can't hear what she's yelling. I think she's just yelling. So if you hear that in the background, I do apologize. Because I really don't know what the deal is. They had some damage to their fence. So it looks like where the fence clicks into where the gate um, closing mechanism clicks into its hold it closed position, um, somehow it's not doing that now. don't know what that's all about. She didn't seem to be in any like distress. She didn't seem to be stuck to the gate. I, She just appeared and started doing it. And it stopped now so I guess she wandered away? I guess it's just kid things? I don't know. If I had been yelling and carrying on like that outside for no reason I would have gotten in trouble. I would have been yelled at, I would have been yelled at. What is the matter with you making all that noise out there? Different parenting styles, I guess. I don't know, I really didn't have anybody where I lived to play with. So it was just kind of me and I really couldn't have people over that often and I didn't really have that many people that were that friendly with me that wanted to come over, so... Or that I was comfortable asking if they wanted to come over. I think I had somebody over like maybe once or twice and that was it. I mean I really didn't have that much stuff to play with and we didn't like live near a park or anything that we could go there and play. And half the time I wasn't home either. A lot of the time I was shipped off to a babysitter's or um, or a family member that got roped into watching me because a lot of the times both parents were working even on the weekends some Saturdays my mom would be working And I think just about every Saturday my dad was for a while. It was rare that he had a Saturday off. Sometimes I had to go to work with him. <clears throat> and then I was bored out of my mind. And had to bring stuff to do. As I got older, it was homework. There were a couple of times when school closed early for flooding. And he had to pick me up and bring me back to his job. Because God forbid I be let to go home. I'm like, the, the house is right there. <laughs> I don't have time to drop you off. You have to come back to work with me. <laughs> really? The, the, the house is right there. I'm just gonna do my homework anyway. Nope, you gotta... 
Alright, fine. But then, you know, I had to stay in his office and... You know, I couldn't really be out wandering because it was an auto parts store, number one. There was lots of dangerous things. It was dirty. Sometimes on the rare Saturday that I had to go in with him, I would get put up in the secretary's office and be sat at a desk and like, don't touch anything. Stay up here and do whatever you brought with you. Okay. And then I would just be up there for hours, bored out of my mind before the internet guys <laughs> way before the internet so you had to bring stuff with you so I either had to bring homework that needed to get done stuff that I could that could be done that I didn't need stuff at home to do or I had to bring a book to read or like stuff to to draw with and I had like a big bag I had to carry with me with all kinds of stuff in it to entertain myself cuz I would be there all day <laughs> we we would have to get there by like I don't know, eight or nine, and then he didn't get to close the store until like six, so it was an all day affair. The highlight of the day was like finding change to go down and scrounge through the vending machine. amazing what entertains you when you were terribly terribly bored So we just have a little bit more to go. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's that much, but it can take a little bit to get everything filtered in here, layered in. All right, so I still have to get my dowel rods. Uh, I can't get them locally, <laughs> apparently. Oh, we didn't check Ace hardware, but I doubt they're going to have them. Lowe's didn't have them. And our ace is kind of small. I guess I could check online and see. There's a website I found that I can buy them by the piece, and it's not too terribly expensive. It's definitely in a price range that I'm willing to pay. So I might grab 
five or ten of them to have them. Even though I'm probably really only going to need one for that specific project, but at least this way I have them. I don't have to go scrambling to order more, because I don't know what shipping is from this place. That might be what gets me, but we'll see. I wish I could remember the place that I ordered the flamingo wood cutouts from, because we ordered from them and shipping wasn't too bad, I don't think. The prices on Amazon were ridiculous. Because I don't need 50 of the things, and they didn't seem to have a smaller amount. And I was having a really hard time justifying $30 for it, and I'm like, I don't know about this. I feel like this isn't the best choice. But then again, if the shipping is ridiculous at the other place. I don't know. I didn't look too much further into it at the moment. I've got it bookmarked because they were closed for um, Passover and Easter week. They, they won't reopen till Monday, so I was like, okay. <clears throat> like, I'll look into it some more once you guys are open. So I, so I certainly didn't want to order it yet if they weren't closed yet. Or I mean, if they weren't open yet. I think they said that you could still place orders, but they wouldn't be processed until they came back from their break. And I'm like, that's fine. I get that. I don't have a problem with that. I just, if they're not going to be processed till you guys come back anyway, then I might as well just wait. You know. Placing it now, when I know you guys aren't there isn't really gonna make it happen any faster <laughs> so that's fine not a big deal not really I didn't check Home Depot because our home our local Home Depot is on the other side of Fayetteville. It is probably a good 35 minute drive from the house. And we've only ever been in that Home Depot maybe three times. don't even know if they would have it in person. I would have rather gotten them in person so I didn't have to deal with shipping them. Because for, for what it is, like the shipping cost is going to kill me to pay for it. Be like, but, because I know it's going to be an awkward shaped box, judging by the standard size on these things. It seems to be three feet long. It's about the size of a yardstick and I'm just like, mm. I don't know about this. But I need them, right? So. And Lowe's had the round dowel rods. They just didn't have the split ones. And I'm like, I need the split ones. And we don't have a table saw. So we can't split them ourselves. And... The husband's kind of like, he's like, I wouldn't want to. He's like, you're going to lose a chunk from the blade growing through it. And it's not going to be the size that you think it's going to be when I'm done with it. And I'm like, mm. so it's just like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I thought I had found a simpler solution to displaying them. And now... I mean, I guess it would be a simpler solution to displaying them if you can get the stuff easily. I 
My mom needed to go to Hobby Lobby to get me to make something for my dad's grave because Joanne's flower section is poop. At least at our Joanne's. Um, so we had to begrudgingly go in there. And uh, I even looked in there while we were there and they didn't have them. And I'm like, of course not. Nobody has the thing that I need. Unless I'm just not putting in the right search words. I mean, I know it's a split DAO. But... Like, I was even, like, looking in the molding and stuff. I'm like, I need something. Like, are you really this expensive? They had some pretty molding in Lowe's. They had stuff even with, like, a leaf pattern carved into it. If it's something you need cut, they'll cut it for you. Works there, he does a lot. See, I wonder if they would split a dowel rod there. I don't know if they would. Because it's not a very thick one. It's a thin one. I think... I think I decided I need three quarters of an inch in diameter. We need it split. So, I don't know. I don't know if they would do it. And how are you, Jess? Ah! Go! I mean, I found some place that sells them. And the price was pretty good, and they did discount price um, in volume so I was like that's not bad it's just I don't know what the shipping is going to be but it's one of those things you know like it's so stupid and small and like not really insignificant but it's just it's not like a specialty thing you didn't you know, like you wouldn't think so it's like I should be able to just go and grab this locally <laughs> so yeah they could split it I mean if you know someone with a lathe, they might be able to make it for free or cheap, and you actually have a long stick holding up one of your curtains, and it's- oh, okay. Well, something to think about if I don't like the shipping from the other place, or if I can't find it any place else local. Um, definitely something to think about. I know there really wasn't anybody around at our Lowe's. I think our Lowe's is really short-staffed, um, because the one day that the husband was there trying to get our dryer. Um, they were back in appliances and the line was like 10 people deep and I don't know if people were on lunch or what or on break but they were paging and paging and paging and nobody was coming back. And I think they, I think he just ordered it online instead while they were waiting for somebody to come over and they left I was like oh lord um just nobody was showing up and I was like wow okay like people were starting to get mad and I was just like wow um can you discord it to me I think Moobot's gonna um get pissy about a link you have my Discord, right? I think you do. I'm in Zorts' Discord. If you need to piggyback through there. Oh, Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. You can Twitter me. I'm still there. I was gonna say, I know you have messaged me before somewhere. That's right, it was Twitter. I mean, they had some cute ones. They had one that kind of looked like a rope braid, and I was like, oh, that is cool. I could, you know, really do something with that, since I'm going to have, like, jute tied on the ends of it to kind of, um, to hang it from, and I was like, that would be kind of cool, and then I looked at the price of it, and I'm like, yeah, that's not that cool. Um, <laughs> it was really long, but, I mean, I know the price of lumber's gone up, but I was like, what the fuck? 
I'm like, I'm not paying nine dollars <laughs> for something that looks like it's like a, a weird rope braid kind of thing. I'm just like, nope. You've been in Discord for a long time and rejoined, so you don't have a lot of people. Oh, that's no problem. Zordos. Did you get to Walmart? Hopefully. And if you did get to Walmart, did they have the thing? Hopefully they had the thing. Oh, hey, I got all kinds of gesso all over my headphone wire. Great. This is why I don't have nice clothes that I wear around the house. All of my house clothes are either pajamas or stuff that I can't really wear out well. Because I will get something all over it, like paint. I have a pile of clothes. I have sleep clothes. I have house clothes. House clothes and sleep clothes can sort of be interchangeable. And then I have leave the house clothes. <laughs> Which is a lot smaller selection. And continues to get smaller. Yeah, and of course all the chargers are locked up and apparently at 6.30 in the morning no one knows where freaking keys to the case are. Unless somebody took them home. <laughs> For fuck's sake. You had black gesso and your oldest one painted the kitchen with it when he was little. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no. Wow. Oh my. Oh my. That's something. <laughs> he ordered one online. Yeah, Walmart's not the easiest place to, to go when you need something and you need to talk to someone about it. It can be a little bit infuriating. We have to go to Walmart tonight, I think. We're gonna try. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but we're gonna try. We, um, we were, I was originally gonna tell Russell to go ahead and get stuff to make his fire pit, and we were going back and forth, and then we went inside, because for the, what size he wanted and the height he wanted, he was looking at the price, and he's like, I, he's like, I can't, he goes, he's like, I just can't spend that. Um, and I'm like, well, this, I mean, it would be like your anniversary gift. It would be early, but I mean, if, if that's what you want. And, um, he's like, no, he's like, I just can't justify it. I was like, well, let's go inside. So we went inside and we looked at the pre-done fire pits and they had a decent one that was like half the price of what it was going to cost us to, to make it to how he wanted it to be. And, um, He's like, okay, and he eventually wanted to go, he eventually did get it, and um, then I, after we had gotten it, I'm like, did we need to put gravel under this? And he goes, eventually? He goes, but at least this one we can pick it up and move it when my mom comes back with the RV, and I'm like, okay. Well, because <laughs> we had been looking at, you know, bricks and stuff, and we happened to go into to Walmart to check something and I was like you know I swear these guys had bricks or cinder blocks at one point it was back by the dirt so he goes you know what we can drive through this section let's drive through it and they had pavers that were cheap um they were like a, what was it two dollars or something dollar ninety eight or some shit and um he's like oh we could put those under it cause you know it gets hot and there's grass back there and I didn't want the grass catching on fire and, um, for some reason we got stuck in our head three and we were like, oh, well, three times four is 12. That's, that's a square. And it, it totally wasn't, we, we were just not paying attention or visualizing it properly. And, uh, we realized that we're four squares short. It really needed to be 
four by four, not four by three. I mean, it works in the four by three, but it is not symmetrical. And Russell's like, this is gonna bug me. I'm like, yeah, it's probably gonna bug me too eventually. Stuff needs to be even, goddammit. And um, <laughs> it's one of our quirks and it's like, it's not fucking even. Um, so we have to go back and grab four more bricks. And it was so weird because they just had them sitting outside on a pallet and there's like a QR, no, not a QR code. I'm like, well, how do we, there's no scan bars on these things. I'm like, do we take one in? And then the sign says, oh, um, give this number or something to the cashier inside. And I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. So he took a picture of it and uh, took it to the cashier and she's like, okay. And we're like, does somebody need to... I said to Russell, I said, does somebody need to be out there while we're loading them, you know, to make sure we're taking the number that we said we were? And he's like, they got cameras. If they're that worried about it, they can come talk to me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It just felt weird. But then again, you know, it's an investment and a hobby. And uh, I think that's a, a great idea. So, um, so we, uh, we put the we put the bricks down and we're like, yeah, we need four more of these guys because it's just not it's not doing it. It's got to be even. It looks weird, uneven. I mean, if we can't get the four more, then we'll cope. But it really does. It's gonna look better with the four more. So, and hopefully the mother-in-law won't insist on parking the RV there when they come back. So. Because, like, the, the less expensive fire pits were definitely less expensively built. Um. Because I had seen one on clearance at one point in, um, in the neighborhood market at Walmart. This is just their grocery store. And, uh, It was like on a pallet for like 30 bucks and the 30 bucks was an ex maybe it was 50 it wasn't quite an expenditure at the time and Russell saw it and he was like oh because we hadn't seen one that cheap before and he's like I want it and I was like well okay I'll okay the purchase but it's gonna be for this reason and he's like that's fine and um it didn't last that long like the he accidentally kicked it or something and like one of the legs crumpled after we had used it a few times so we we're kind of disappointed in that but it was a little flimsy this one's a lot more sturdy um, so we're hoping that uh, it lasts a bit better hate to say it but I can see you guys building a fire pit and the mother-in-law still trying to park the RV. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was afraid of. Because he's like, I can't move that. This one we can at least pick up and move if we need to. It'll be a pain in the ass to move the pavers out of the way so that the RV doesn't crush them. But um, it's still doable. Because where they ended up having to park it the last time, we had a couple of round pavers laying around that were left over from something and um, we had to put that down so that they could put the rear tires on it because it was starting to sink into the, the, the dirt in the backyard because the backyard is not level and all of the water runs to where they had the RV parked and it floods back there sometimes but they were insistent that they were going to park the RV here and I'm like Russell this isn't gonna work. <laughs> he goes, you know it and I know it, but they're being stupid about it. And I'm like, all right. So I don't, and where they used to park at uh, his aunt's house, um, the aunt said her diet was doing great when they weren't there. So they might have lost their RV parking spot with his aunt, or one of his aunts. 
And I'm like, oh, yay. But we're gonna need her to be back here at some point anyway. It's probably not gonna be this fall. It might not happen until next fall. But um, my mom said she wants to see Key West and she said something about going to visit my brother. The remaining, well, I can't say the remaining half sibling because my sister's somewhere? But the two of them don't exactly talk. Um, she talks to my brother sometimes. And occasionally he'll know where she is. But um, she usually calls him when she's looking for money. And uh, from what I gathered. So I don't know where the fuck she is right now. She might be in one of the Carolinas. I don't know. Quite honestly, if I never run into her again, I will be just fine. Because her and I had words. And uh, she did me dirty. And I, I got tired of her bullshit. She's like a queen manipulator. And a lot of people don't see through it. And I'm just like, no, we're not doing this. And because I saw through it, she got pissed off at me. So I don't, I can't deal with her shit, so. So I'll be fine if I don't ever have to deal with her again. I can't remember the last time I spoke to her. I think the last time I spoke to her would have been... Oh shit, what year did he die? It was before Russell and I got engaged. I know that. But I don't remember when we got engaged. Um... Time is such a blur. It would have been the Thanksgiving... Right after he died, like, I guess same month. And I wasn't putting up with her bullshit. And I think my mom was just so distraught that she was just happy that her other child was willing to talk to her again. She made us have Thanksgiving at my sister's house, but my dad wasn't allowed to come because there's, there's a whole story there that, um, it was my sister that said my dad wasn't allowed to come. There's, we're not going to go into that. Um, it was bullshit. I'm pretty sure it was bullshit. She made up stories or interpreted something wrong. And people believed her when they shouldn't have. So, but he wasn't allowed to go to that. Long story short. Um, and I just, I don't want to deal with her. She's a fake. She makes shit up. Anything she can do to play the sympathy card, she'll do it. 100%. So. You had your review at work last night, and average rage raise for the plant was 4%. You got 4.5. Yay! Congratulations, sir. That was wonderful. So, all that hard work paying off. Mm -hmm.
Huh? Oh, Zort's got a raise last night. Oh, congrats, Zort. All right, we're gonna advance our tutorial. <laughs> At least it, you know, at least all of the busting your ass is acknowledged. Garbage, uh, uh, we're gonna give you five cents for these either. either. Yeah, I hate those. I think the highest raise I got on a review. Alright, so he's putting trees in. Okay, so this is what we're gonna start to work on next. So it's kind of like a mixture of fall just starting colors. Kind of, sort of. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna let him do this for a second and figure out where we need to be. So he's gonna switch between like yellow ochre, yellow yellow, a little bit of orange. There might be a little bit of um, red mixed in there in some spots and there's a little bit of like a light sap green in there too um one job you had years ago offer a two cent raise jesus fucking christ i would have been like that's okay you keep it holy shit why bother two fucking cents the highest raise i think i got on a yearly review was 30. 30 cents. And I busted my ass at that place. And they needed me. They knew they needed me. Yeah. They, they walked all over me at the craft store. Like, I was one of their few competent front end people. Plus, they had me doing cash office resetting the registers on the weekend and making deposits on the weekend and sometimes during the week if the office manager was on vacation and they needed the other girl that knew how to do it freed up to do her department stuff and uh okay so that's that's all we're too far now all right can we So we're gonna, it's gonna be a little blurry. We're gonna have to pause it there. So we need to, like maybe about here-ish, and yeah, maybe about here-ish. So we have to kind of do a, a domey thing here, a little semicircle. And um, you know, they always gave me such glowing reviews, and then it was a thirty cent raise, and I'm like, really? That's it. Okay, I could like walk out the door and totally fuck y'all over right now. Right. I when I left there, I had um. I left there because I really was getting to the point where I needed benefits. Um, and it became glaringly obvious because, um. It was just, it was getting to the point where, you know, we were trying to get our shit together to get married, and, you know, trying to do the adult things. They didn't offer insurance. Um, you know, it, it's just, it was something that, you know, I had to start thinking about and, you know, starting to think about the adult things and stuff. And one of the ladies that worked there, she's like, you strike me as a lifer. Don't be a lifer here. Go somewhere else. She's like, don't, don't do it. Cause she had been there forever. And, um, she's like, you're going to regret it. Just don't do it. And I kind of just like brushed her off. I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. And then the longer I was there, the more pissed off I was just getting about everything. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Um, this is very bright and you know just the longer shit went on the more fed up I was getting with it and it just it was pissing me off because then I think the final straw where I was like I need to get the fuck out of here was um, 
well, one of the final straws was my department had reopened. The person that had took over merchandising it after I left, left. I was like, can I get my department back? No. Why not? It's open. I know how to do it. You wouldn't have to train anybody. But you'd have to take a cut and pay. Okay. I was happier in the department. I'd rather be in the department. I'll take a cut and pay. That's fine. I understand. I'm not going to throw a huge stink about it. I understand that certain job levels have certain paid positions. That's fine. I wouldn't have the amount of shit I had to do back there that I did up front. And they're like, no. I'm like, really? Why not? We need you more up front. <sighs> so I was mad about that. I was like, what the fuck ever. Then... They saddled me with a new title up front. And they're like, because we were a training store. We were we were a poster child store um, since the owner of the chain lived like 20 minutes away. He would just pop in unannounced at times. So we always had to be show ready, inspection ready, because we never knew when he was going to walk in. And um, that was fucking nightmare and a half to begin with so um since we were also a training store and by that management training i mean every store trains their people but we were a manager training store and an assistant manager training store so they came to our store to learn how to do their job and we had assistant managers rotating out because usually if you became an assistant manager, probably within a year to two years, you got bumped up to having your own store. If you did um, your assistant manager training right and did all the things they wanted you to do. So um, all of the management trainees had to learn how to do the front end. They had to because you know if somebody's out sick or there's a problem or the lines are real long and you need to jump in you need to know how to do the thing because there's going to be a time or there could potentially be a time where you need to know how to do a return or you need to know how to do a purchase order because you know you're the only one there it was you know all of your people are out sick nobody else knows how to do it you, know, you need to know how to do the thing or you had to give your front end people a break or something because you were the manager on duty that night had to know how to do the thing. Multitude of reasons. Just because you're the store manager or an assistant manager, especially assistant managers, um, doesn't mean that you don't have to do the thing. You need to know how to do all of it. And um, they, uh, they would come up front to train. Now, I didn't come in until like 1 in the afternoon. 1, 1.30. I think it was 1.30. store opens at like 9 a.m. So any trainees that would be there would have been there at 9 a.m. Well, the one day I come in and the office manager goes, so um, yeah, here's the deal. We've got manager trainees in today. Okay, whatever. Um, I'm going to be sending them up front to get some time on front end on customer service. Okay. You're the only one that's allowed to train them. And I looked at her, I'm like, huh? She's like, nobody else is allowed to train them. You're the one that's training them. They have to be up there. Okay, they're not allowed to leave front end. Oh, okay. Until like one of us tells them that they can walk away. They, they need to be up there. And I'm just kind of looking at her, I'm like, okay. So she goes, so you're going to be our official manager trainer for front end. And I just kind of looked at her. I said, do I get a raise? She goes, no. I'm like, how are you giving me important tasks that the other front end supervisors were perfectly capable of doing, but couldn't do because 90% of the time I was fixing their fuck ups that night <laughs> that they did during the day. Because people were coming back. They're like, yeah, my receipt doesn't look right. And I'm just like, 
what? I was just, I was like, so you're telling me I have to do this thing now. And you're not even gonna give me a pay increase for doing the thing? What? And they're like, yeah. Oh, okay. They like made up a title, told me that now I was also manager in training trainer on the front end and then wouldn't give me a pay increase for it. I was like, I was like, this, this has got to stop. So I started the process. Um, my dad's department at the casino had an opening, and they had benefits at the time. And starting pay was, I think, nine dollars an hour. I think I was making nine fifty at the craft store on front end with no benefits um, at the time, and. I was like, okay, so I knew it was going to be a slight pay cut if I took it, but I'm thinking, well, I'd be getting benefits and, you know, that, that would be better than where I'm at right now with nothing. So to work in, I was allowed, I could work in the department with my dad. Um, we just couldn't work on the same shift. They, that was fine. They didn't have a problem with that. They just said, you just can't be working together. Um, but you can be in the same department. We're like, okay, whatever. Um, so to work in that department, you had to be licensed through the state because we were dealing with financial sensitive information. Um, we didn't touch money, but we were back where the money was kept. Um, and you know, and we're running credit reports on people and handling social security numbers and all that shit. So, um, and, and contacting their banks, you know, we're, we're all up in their financial business. So, um, we had to get a license through the state, um, saying, you know, they didn't see anything in our background history that, uh, they saw as a problem. And, you know, we were truthful about the things, you know, we said this thing and they they're like, okay, we see that couldn't lie on this thing. And they wanted family history too. Like, you know, how many siblings do you have? What do these people do? Where do they work? You know, it was, it was like, holy shit. The amount of information you had to give on this background check form was incredible. And I'm like, I just want, what? <laughs> Like, this seems a little excessive. Um, but I filled it out. And I didn't say anything yet to um, to the office manager at the craft store because I didn't know if the license was going to get approved. You had to apply for the license. And if you got the license approved, then I could apply at the casino, right? So you had to do X. You had to do, like, you know, you had to go here before you could go there. And, um, so I didn't say anything because, you know, my brother had been, um, in the one brother that had passed away had been in some trouble at times, you know, didn't know if that was going to be a problem. Um, my financial status had gone to shit. My credit had gone to shit because I had a slight mental shutdown, um, when I had been away and, you know, had my own little nervous breakdown and I was trying to get my shit together, um, and get in a position where I could also start fixing that. And I didn't know if that was going to be a problem. So I, I would really, you know, I was like, well, I'll see if it doesn't get approved. It doesn't get approved. No harm, no foul. You know, I'm just, I'm going to be here until I find something else. <clears throat> well, um, Apparently the Casino Control Commission in New Jersey actually does verify the shit that you put on those the background form. Because, you know, you never know if somebody's actually going to call and get work history or whatnot. You never know, right? A lot of times you're like, oh yeah, like I'm putting this on here for, for no reason whatsoever. They call and check. Do you know how I found out they call and check your work history? I walked into the craft store to start my shift. And was met with a pissed off office manager yelling in my face. Why didn't you tell me you were looking for a new job? I was like, what? So what are you talking about? 
She goes, why didn't you tell me you were looking for a new job? Somebody was calling here, checking on your work history today. And I was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, I applied for a casino license. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be approved. So I didn't want to upset everybody thinking I was leaving. Because then if it didn't get approved, I wasn't going to leave yet. So, yeah. I need benefits. And my dad's department had an opening. But I have to get the license first. If the license is not approved, then I can't go work there. So, it's just for the license application. She was pissed. So, I tried to give them my two weeks notice when it did get approved. Except the um the the lady that hired me for the my dad's apartment she's like okay well we actually have an orientation in a week and i want you to be at that and i was like oh okay so and it was like right in the middle of when i would have been working so i'm like yeah hey i can sorry i can only give you a week's notice i can work this sale though but yeah because we had a special sale coming up um on the last day of like my week's notice and uh <laughs> I was like I wanted to give you guys two weeks but then they said they needed me to start sooner than that they needed me at this orientation and um so I did that orientation <laughs> and they fucked up my drug test <laughs> cause um the casino doesn't play and um they don't make you pee in a cup they take your hair and they test your hair. They had to find, um, they like went to a section in the back of my head and they cut some hair like underneath where it wouldn't be visible. And, um, they didn't cut enough <laughs> apparently because I got a call a couple days later saying I needed to come back and they needed to cut my hair again because they didn't cut enough. And I'm like, and then that took another week. I'm like, I could have fucking did the two weeks notes. <laughs> Cause I couldn't start until the um, the drug test came back negative. It did come back negative, but the bastards didn't take enough hair to begin with. I'm like, really? Okay. So that was a pain in the ass. And if you're bald, they make you go across the street to the nurse's office in in the building, the employee nurse's office. And then they pluck hairs from other places. <laughs> They're not playing. It's like, okay, sure. But oh my God. I'm like, y'all don't fucking pay me enough. Like. I, I just, I was so flabbergasted how hostile she was to me from that point forward until I left. I was just like, wow. Like, y'all aren't paying me enough for this shit. I'm sorry, that front end job with the amount of shit that we had to deal with was at least a $15 an hour job. I'm sorry. In that, in that time frame, that was at least a 15 hour um, $15 an hour job for the amount of bullshit that we had to deal with because we had to watch the kids and make sure they were sticking to their um, their break schedule we had to do purchase orders we had to, to deal with the custom framing orders getting rung up when for some reason the custom framers couldn't ring it up even though they had to walk it up front and those were fun to figure out um, we had to do the custom fire arrangement orders uh, ringing them out those were a fucking nightmare to decipher um, you know, we had to watch the lines. We had to run the hourly sales reports. We had to do this. We had to do that. And I'm just like, wow. Plus, plus I was doing back office. I was just like, really? You have the other lady that's also trained to do this. And she can come back in on the weekends to, uh, to do it until you get somebody else trained. I gave you at least a week's notice 
it's not my fault that you kept the rest of these people on the front end that were that incompetent. Like, that sounds like a you problem and not a me problem. You had one job that did hair follicle testing for pre-employment and you just buzzed your hair so they had to get some chest hair for it. Yeah, they said that they would pull from armpit or downstairs. Um, so, <laughs> they weren't playing. <laughs> They're like, we'll get it from somewhere. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Alright, well, um, here. Here's my, my head hair. You can have that. It'll grow back. Like, you don't need to take hair from downstairs, okay? So, like, we don't need to go there. That seems a little invasive for what I'm going to be doing. Um, and I'm not getting paid that much more an hour. I mean, I did take a pay cut to go over to the casino because they're like, well, we can't start you at 950 because you have no experience. And I was like, well, yeah, I get that. So like we can start you at nine and then you'll get back up to that one uh, with raises and stuff. And I did eventually um, when I left the casino, I was making um, like 11 something an hour. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad. But, um, you know. It was just such a fucking hostile environment. I was just like, really? I was so dumbfounded at why they were so angry at me for something that was their fault. I'm like, I can't work for this amount of money anymore. For what you're offering me. I'm sorry, I can't. This job is stressful. It is extremely stressful. There's nights where I go home from the craft store and I was so stressed out, I would just lay in bed and my entire body would like throb at once. And I'm like, oh god. Like, there were days that I could just be hanging from the ceiling upside down like a cat with its fur on end. I was just like, oh my god. It, it was fucking awful. And I'm like, this is, no, 950 for this shit? And then you're telling me I'm the only one that's allowed to train the managers up front? And then you're not even going to pay increase me for the extra responsibilities that you're throwing at me? No. No. Sorry. Especially for the amount of fuck-ups from everybody else that I was fixing all day. I'm like, the one lady they refused to get rid of. And I couldn't figure out why. And then somebody told me. And I, it made all the sense in the world. For some reason, the lady that would constantly no-call, no-show, come in hungover, Constantly. I guess the kids that worked there all talked to her. There was like a whole nother hier hierarchy or click in the store that I had no idea about because I, I did my job and then I went home. And uh, <laughs> apparently the kids, because she'd be on break when a lot of the kids were on break, um, talked to her. So apparently she was the store snitch. So, they weren't gonna get rid of her, from what I was told. She could fuck up till the cows came home, and they weren't gonna get rid of her. And boy, did she fuck up. The one weekend, no call, no show the entire weekend. She technically should have been fired multiple times for the no call, no shows. But, I guess she didn't have a phone. And the payphone in the park that she lived, like the the um the RV park that she lived in, or the trailer park she lived in, uh, wasn't working. So she's like, I couldn't call. I was sick all weekend, and I just kind of looked at her like, Were you sick or were you hungover? Because she fucked me over so bad the one night, where management was on their knees up front customer service begging me to stay because he didn't want to be on register and um, I'm like because he didn't want to do any work basically like he would have had to have been out on the floor 
keeping after the miners, making sure that they were doing their job instead of standing around talking and making sure they were cleaning and, and, you know, doing the things that they needed to do so they could fucking get out of there in a timely manner. And, uh, if I didn't stay, then his assistant manager for the night was going to have to be on register and he was the one that would chase after the kids because I think the kids liked him better than than the store manager. Can't say I blame them. He was he was better than the previous one, but um, he could still be a bit of a prick when he wanted to be. And uh, I'm like, dude, I have plans. He's like, I really he's like I'm begging you to cancel him and stay, please. I'm like I have been here since seven a.m. I want to go home. And um, it was like. It was getting like near 3.30 or so when I was supposed to leave. <laughs> and I'm like, dude. He's like, please, I'm begging you. I'm on my knees begging you. And I'm just like, I was like, you owe me so bad. Because I know, I know. He's like, I promise I'll make it up to you. And I was like, fine, what the fuck ever. So I had to do a 14 hour day. It was probably more than 14 hours. I was pissed. I had to go take another... And they're like, you can go to dinner break. I had to go take a 15 minute break right then. And, um, came back. They let me go to dinner around six, I think. And, um, once they had gotten everything settled from shift to change and stuff, I technically should have gone before then, but I had just come back and I'm like, really? So I went to dinner, came back. Cause we had been slammed up front all day and I was exhausted. I was like, I, I'm not in the mood for this shit, but I was a little pissy. Turned out Russell got stuck at work too. So our plans would have been fucked anyway, but I didn't know that at the time because I had no way of getting a hold of him and he had no way of getting a hold of me. And, um, so I think I managed to get picked up that night. Cause I had called my house and I'm like, hey, I gotta stay till closing. So I was there from 7 a.m. till almost 10 o'clock that night. Hello, honey, how are you? Completely exhausted. I think my dad picked me up that night, so I didn't have to take the bus at that time of night and deal with all the transfers and shit. Um, got home. I had to be back at the store at 7.30 the next morning. I was pissy, I had a headache, I was exhausted. I'm like, just let me eat and go to fuck to bed. Went to bed, got up, was in the next morning. And uh, I'm sitting out front waiting for the assistant manager to show up to unlock the door so I can get in and start doing deposits for um, armored car and resetting the registers for the day and all that shit. Got that done, locked in the office, and um, I'm finishing up the final, or no, I think I had the, the cart with the registers in it, in with me, locked in the tiny inner office, and I hear somebody messing with the door, and I'm like, the fuck, and I turned around, and management was, the assistant manager was unlocking the door, he goes, have you heard from so-and-so? I'm like, nope. I said, she no called, no showed last night. He's like, fucking really? And I was like, yep. I had to do a double. Um, so he's like, great. So he took the registers and um, he went to go put the, well, he took the tills to go put them in the registers. He left door auto locks behind you. So um, if I left the office I either had to make sure I was done or I was going to have to get somebody with keys to let me back in. So I didn't have a key to that door. I had the combination to the safe, but I didn't, um, and half the time I had to have them open it because I kept flipping the numbers. Combination locks were, were not good for me, so it was not good. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm sitting there. He took the tills. And I'm working on balancing the safe. And all of the sudden, the 
the the inner office door this tiny little closet that i'm in the door slams open scared the fucking shit out of me and i'm like what the fuck and the office manager's standing there she's seething i'm like what the fuck are you doing here on a sunday and she goes you need to be out of here as soon as you're done this office and she was like screaming at me and i'm like what did i do she goes, we were not allowed to have overtime this week, and if you were here the full day, you, you have to be out of here by noon. And she goes, um, earlier if better. And she was like, we were not authorized for this. And she was just screaming, seething at me. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, I did not want to stay last night. I was begged to stay. Okay, let's get that straight right now. I said, go talk to your manager because he's the one that begged me to stay last night. He goes, I know, I already talked to him. And she was like, like, oh my God. I don't know if it was bleed over anger at him that she was like screaming at me, but I'm like, I'm, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. You can't scream at me for doing something management above me told me to do i was just like oh my god i i was just like you know you know what i'm like i'm so done with this shit i mean that job was giving me a nervous breakdown all on its own i was just i was like i can't i can't handle this and I was like, what the fuck ever? Fine, I'll be done. So I, I rushed through everything else I had left to do. I didn't do, um, I was supposed to do return log um, that day. Because Sunday mornings are a little bit slower. So one of my jobs was we had damages that would come back. That people returned, their stuff would, um, you know, something was broken when they bought it or you know, something would fall off the shelf and shatter. And so we had a whole, we had a, we had a shopping cart that we kept at the last register that we would put this stuff in. And then that stuff got written off and trashed. And, um, I would have to enter, you know, the item, I think the UPC code and how much it was scanning for into a spreadsheet for her. And, um, I was supposed to do that that day and I'm like well that ain't happening today and um like she wants me out of here I'm gonna leave so um my hands were shaking after that I'm like oh, well, well. and I quick finish deposit and um I I'm like I, I said to the store manager when I left the office I was like all right I have to leave now and he's like yeah I know he, he did not look happy. He looked like he had been dressed down as well. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I clocked out, grabbed my shit out of my locker, and was walking up front. And the assistant manager that was up there, um, because my lady that no called, no showed the night before was supposed to be up front at opening, she never showed up. And he was standing there and he did a double take and he goes, where are you going? I was like, I was told I had to leave. And he's like, he rolled his eyes and he's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? So that meant that he was stuck on register for the rest of the day. It was 11 o'clock in the morning when I walked out of there. I'm like, bye. Like, apparently I wasn't supposed to stay last night. I didn't want to stay last night. They kind of, not necessarily made me, but it, it was determined in my brain that I, I probably should after he was on his knees begging me to stay. Um, I think he got in trouble for that. I'm just like, wow, I guess they were, I don't even know how she found out before she came in um, on Monday that I had stayed the night before. They had a remote system, like she was the office manager. She was also the, the owner or the co-owner of the chain's daughter. So they had remote systems, I think, where they could um, log in and check on, on payroll and time clock hours and stuff, I guess, from home. And Sunday's your, your last chance if that person's there to, um, to stop any overtime from happening, so. They were being real, real strict on the overtime that week for budget, and uh, 
I don't know why she just didn't call and talk to him or call and talk to me and say, hey, like she could have had this conversation at a normal volume. She was pissed. And I was just like, oh my God, I can kind of laugh about it now, but it was not funny when it happened. And I was just like, oh my God, this is not, this is not it. I'm like, how can you yell at me? And I'm doing what I was told. Apparently very easily. So how are you, honey? How is your day going? How's your weekend going? That place was crazy to work for. Absolutely crazy. So I'm just working on getting some trees put in the background here. We're gonna have to kind of like layer our way down, so. We'll see how things go. And we don't have to be real precise with our shapes in here because he wasn't very precise there. It just kind of looks like lines of color. Some of them are a little bit fatter than others, so that's fine. We just need to get enough of it tapped in so that it's holding. But hey, we started actually doing something that wasn't background color today, so yay! I know it can be a little tedious to watch like the, the large chunks of color going in. I get that. Um, it's kind of fun to watch on the time, not really the time lapses, but um, the, the speed up videos that I do, even if they are a bitch to edit. Um, it's kind of fun watching them back and like just watching everything just, you know, filling in. It's kind of cool. So episode five's um, speed felt, sorry my brain just stopped, um, <laughs> episode five's speed felt's probably going to take me maybe a month or so more to edit, so I'm only on, I only just started editing the second live stream, because I, I take the live streams from doing the whole thing and then I throw them into my editing software and then I start cutting down all the times where I've stopped and I'm talking to you guys or you know or the flipping over and you know brushing all the fluff down in the back into um, a much shorter timeline of the project being put together and I speed it up to um, like 800% which is as fast as I've that I personally am able to tolerate my hand jumping all over the screen, so I figured that was probably a decent speed for that. So um, I've got the first session edited. How many sessions did we do on that last one? Was it 13? I feel like, maybe. I'm on two. <laughs> I'm on two. I have no idea how large this file is going to be because apparently on this PC um, OBS defaulted to recording in 60 frames per second so the files are a little bit larger. So it's like, oh, okay, sure. We'll see how that turns out. I have my portable though. I have a two terabyte portable that I just, I download the VODs after I send them to YouTube because they download easier off of YouTube than Twitch for me. And uh, I just, I immediately shove them off onto the portable. I'm like, you go live there, you take up too much space. I'm still kind of going through my music stuff and figuring out what I want to keep, what I don't want to keep. I'm so mad I lost I lost those save files from Minecraft though. Uh, all that work. All that work. I'm so mad. I had gotten the entire city laid out. I had dug well not the entire city laid out. I had the wall laid out and uh lost all of it. So mad. So mad.
at least we were able to fix the graphics issue with Minecraft last night. I still need to um, load in Planet Zoo and see if what we did to fix Minecraft um, fucked up the settings I had for- yeah, it lost all of it. That, that desert thing I was working on, it's gone. I, I went to load up Minecraft and I, I went to look at the saves, I'm like, oh, and Russell's like, what? I said, oh, the saves are gone. He goes, yeah, those were local. And I was like, no. I was like, fuck. And um, so, you know, I, I had a, a brief meltdown about that. I'm like, well, I guess we're starting over again. Great. I lost the save file for our non-commentary Minecraft and uh, lost the Desert City one. I know we hadn't been in Minecraft recently, but I had been thinking with hopping back in there, um, I was kind of starting to feel it again, and uh, but we might do actual survival mode where I have to deal with mobs on the next one. It's just I'm turning off the wardens and the pillager raids. I, I can't deal with that shit. I don't like those mobs. I've never been able to survive them attacking me. Just no, that's okay. You haven't played Minecraft in forever. There's definitely some new stuff. Um, apparently I think they're getting ready for another update. Um, you might have to, I had to, um, so like a friend, an old friend of ours had bought it for us or no, maybe we bought it. I think we bought a cop, the copies when they, when it was still in beta. So we've had our copies for forever. Like when it was like $9 <laughs> or nine euros or whatever. Um, we, we'd had our copy for forever. Um, back before beds existed and you could like shear sheep with your hand and stuff um, back in my day so um, since my account was so old when Microsoft bought it from uh, um, Notch After a while, I started seeing a notice on the launcher that talked about, oh, um, you're going to be asked to, was it migrate? I think was the word, your account to a Microsoft account. And I was like, like for a while, like they kind of gave you the option if you wanted to. And then suddenly it was like not optional anymore. <laughs> and, and then like the bedrock version, you still have those emails. Yeah, then the bedrock version became a thing and, and then it's like and then they just kept adding more and more like the dungeon thing and the adventure thing and I've never touched any of those and um, so I kind of got told by the launcher you need to migrate your account and I was like okay so then I had to set up a Microsoft account so I didn't have one or at least not one that was gonna work in this situation I was like, all right, so I did all that, and I kind of, I had logged into Minecraft a couple of times after that, but I hadn't really done anything with it. Life got stupid and I got busy, and Minecraft is one of my brain dead things that I like to go do when I just want to, just want to chill. <laughs> like, I don't have anything pressing at the moment, let me just go and do this. And, um... I hadn't logged into it in a while and I was sitting here since um, he was asking me you know what stuff I needed put on the new PC and I was like oh well I want this put back on and some of my steam games we didn't reinstall right away hi where's dad you usually come to me when dad's somewhere hang on Zuzu's hi buddy what is the matter do I need to go find dad Hold on a second, let me hide that. Sometimes when I pop off of that screen. Uh, where is Russell? He's been missing for a little bit. I don't know if he's in the shower. I don't know if he's in the other room. 
He's somewhere that Zuzu can't get to him. He's in the other bedroom, talking to my mom. He's not locked out, I don't know what his deal is. He gets weird sometimes when he can't get to where Russell is. Oh, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh right, Minecraft. So, um, I had no idea what version they were on. I know, what was the last one I had seen? Um, I think they had just done, maybe the cavern update? Where, like, the glowy lichen had come in. That was, like, the last one I had really paid attention to. I know that the phantoms are a thing now. Or apparently they spawn if you don't sleep or something. I don't know. And, um, when I loaded into this version of Minecraft, um, it said it was, like, 19.4. Apparently 20 is coming. I don't know what's going to be involved in that update. Yeah, I don't know. He just started, like, jumping up at me, and he's like, hey, hey, hey. Uh, it looks like he needs to go to the bathroom, so. Okay, I was confused as to why he wasn't telling you, and I didn't know where you were. I realized you had been missing for a little bit. I wasn't sure if he was trying to tell me I needed to go. Is rain coming in? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, might have a fire tonight. We'll see. See you home after. I know it's a little windy, um, that should be okay, because we don't do a very large one. Nah, it'd be okay, you got a problem with my right Um, no, no real rain chance until Wednesday. Okay. Alright, put that back up. Even though I tell OBS, this is the window, and this is only the window you're supposed to show, it seems to be bugged or something, because if I click on something else, it's like, oh, I'm going to show this. I'm like, you don't need to show my DMs. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, I don't know what's coming in 20. But when I load it in, first time on this PC, I hop in the game, I'm like, the graphics look like shit. What the fuck's happening? Apparently, this graphics card is so much better than my old one. <laughs> um... Like, I got used to my old settings, but I'm like, I was getting a migraine last night within five minutes of loading in. I'm like, oh my god, what's happening? What is fucking happening? And we couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. I'm like, what is this? And husband was having his own anxiety issues last night. And um, he was in the middle of kind of an anxiety attack, and I was trying to distract him. And I'm like, help me. What is this? So sometimes if I can get him to think about something else... It'll calm down a little bit faster depending on the type and the trigger of that particular one. And he goes, I don't know, he goes, I, I can't do this right now. And I'm like, fine. So I was trying to figure it out, which is never a good thing to leave me alone to troubleshoot something. Because then I start playing with settings <laughs> that I probably shouldn't be touching that I don't understand what they do. So, there were some things that I understood what they did, and, um, and that, you know, I'm like, well, I remember having it set to this on the other PC. I remember doing this on the other PC. Um, mostly so that I could make it run on the other PC. <laughs> so, you know, you get used to the, the shit settings, and, um, you know, you get used to the, just make it run settings. Apparently something changed because when I loaded in I everything looked normal for like five to six squares in front of me and then these lines appeared and it was lines in between every single block and when you looked up and out it just it kind of looked like an old tube TV screen at one point where you just had all these like little lines just just just, just going just going and I'm like what the Fuck. I'm like, am I having a stroke? Like, what is happening? What is happening? I'm like, can I no longer play Minecraft? I was like, is it my glasses? Is it, is it me? What the fuck is happening? And um, I finally got him to come look at it. He goes, I don't know what that is. And I was like, you see it though, right? It's not me. He goes, no, no, I see it. 
It's like, okay. Like, I couldn't even really describe it. It wasn't quite a grid, but it was. Because it only covered the ground. And wherever I saw, like, ground tiles water, it wasn't there quite so much. Maybe further out, but I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I'm trying different things. So then I started looking up stuff. And he vanished to the other room and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is the problem? So then I found something. And I was like, well, somebody said if I turn this on in the graphics card settings. I was like, how do I get there? And he did voice to text on his phone while he was messaging me on Discord. And he's like telling me to look up video. And I'm like, I did that. It brought me up to a video editor. This, this is not fucking helpful. Because, you know, I wanted to make sure I was getting to the right thing. And then he comes out and he goes, I said NVIDIA. I said, well, it clearly says video. So I don't know what you want me to do. I did what you told me to do. It didn't do the thing. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the technology. I'm doing what the thing said. So, um, we're trying different stuff. Nothing seemed to be changing. It wasn't getting worse. It wasn't getting better. It just, it wasn't fixing it. Um, so I'm starting to get mad. And, uh, and then all of a sudden he goes, oh, and I'm like, what? He's like, son of a bitch. I was like, information, please. And, um, he's like, so apparently, um, NVIDIA and Minecraft don't always get along. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, there's a certain setting in Minecraft where you're telling Minecraft to do this, but then NVIDIA likes to do what it wants and it will sometimes override how stuff is rendered. And I'm like, okay. He goes, go to this setting in the graphics card where it says under 3D rendering. I'm like, okay. He goes, Click the option that says let the app decide or let the game decide on who it's going to listen to, whether it's going to listen to the graphics card or if it's going to listen to the game settings. And I was like, um, and I was okay with it. And then he goes, this might have been why Planet Zoo looked like shit. And I was like, is this going to fuck up my settings in Zoo? He goes, I don't know. You might have to mess with them again. I'm like, fuck. The lines went away. I was like, well, at least I can play Minecraft again. Because I don't have a whole lot of games that I can play or that I want to play. A lot of them are kind of Stardew Valley-esque. Um, kind of like that genre. Um, I'm really excited for Diablo 4, though. I'm really excited for that. That won't be out until July, uh, June, though. So... Gotta sit tight on that one. But I, um, we, we farmed gold in WoW, um, through December and January. And we made enough gold to buy enough tokens for us to each get our own copy of, um, of Diablo 4. Because we were really nervous, because D4 was really expensive for us. Um, I know some people are probably like, well, that's standard price for a lot of the games now. And that's great and all, but at the time, really still, really expensive, still is kind of expensive for us. And then um, we would need two copies, because he wants to play with me. Um, and, you know, fair enough. Diablo is more fun when you've got, you know, people to play it with. And, um... And we were like sitting there like, well, what if we don't like it? Because we hadn't seen any demos for it at all at that point. Um, had no idea how it was going to feel being in there. Because, you know, we were so used to um, to 3. And 3 was fine. We, we could both play 3, you know. Didn't really have any qualms with 3. Um, but 4 was taking so long and they were changing the storyline a little bit. And so we didn't know what to expect. Well, apparently if you pre-purchased and we just got the base... What was that? Seventy dollars per copy. Um, that was a lot of hours of farming, and wow, 
I couldn't play, I couldn't quest in WoW, so I was like, I might as well just farm for gold. Um, because of the stupid fucking dragon riding. I know some people love it, and I'm not, I'm not getting into those that love it. I can't do the dragon riding. It was triggering migraines on me. So that cut out two thirds of the storyline, and I tried playing with all the accessibility settings. Nothing helped. Um, the graphic that was on the nose of the dragon when you were doing the dragon riding swirled in like a pinwheel motion. And then there was another graphic uh, that, um, of like jet streams, wind coming off of the dragon's wings. They happened at the same time. So visually between my brain being my brain and the, the multitude of shit that's going on with me. And my glasses are also polarized, so fast movements can be a problem. Um, so between the spinny and then the, the rushy wind graphic thingy happening at the same time, instant migraine. I, I couldn't. It was too much visual at the same time. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I tried four different times. Played with all different settings. Nothing. Like four different sessions. Um, couldn't, couldn't make it work. And then husband was willing to, um, pop in and do some of the dragon riding involved quests, but he's not always feeling well. He's not always available. And then that meant that I couldn't, you know, I was stuck. I had to wait. I couldn't just, you know, do what I wanted to when I wanted to do it. And it sucked. And I'm like... This isn't fun for me. I'm glad people are enjoying it and I'm glad people can can play it, but I, I can't. I physically can't do this. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I'll get back to WoW. Um, it kind of put a damper on me playing my challengers because, you know, it sucks when you can't do the thing. So I had to step back from doing the thing, and I've also stepped back from um, from doing stuff for Lita. So I'm no longer doing, I'm no longer watching the socials for her. I, I've basically stepped back from everything. Um, not uh, not doing the socials and not doing the articles anymore on the website. Um, I'm not participating in the show anymore. I'm still there as a mod at the moment. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay as a mod yet. I, I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, I don't know. I mean... I don't know if I'll be able to play in the next expansion or if I'm fully done with WoW. I don't know. I might be fully done with WoW. Yeah, it, it became a full-time job. It was essentially a full-time job with the amount of stuff I was doing and the amount of time it was taking because um, I was doing holiday articles. I was doing um, celebration articles for when people hit max level. Um, I was doing, um, I was, I mean, all of the mods were supposed to help with show notes during the week if we saw points of interest or if somebody had a question to add to the list to, um, to go over on the show. Um, not everyone was doing it though. It kind of became just me doing it. Zaya did it a few times when he came across something that was worth putting in there, but, um, you know, it kind of became just me and Zaya doing the thing for her. And it's a lot of stuff to do. Like, it takes an incredible amount of time, um, because, you know, you have to do the research to see if anything's changed. You have to try to track down any articles. You have to track down people. Um, it's like, hey, you're going to get me this thing, and then you're stressing out, is you going to get back to me, you know, how do I get a hold of this person, who is this person? 
um, I was doing the state of the challenges lists for the show um, and screenshotting those and putting those into a backup folder and then the website would have issues and we'd have to come up with workarounds and and doing art for stuff for different articles and things and you know I might not be drawing the art but I still had to like put banners together and find the things and do the things it, it was time consuming it really was and then modding on top of it and then watching the socials and then posting here and posting there and then you know there was talk that TweetDeck was not was going away because of the Twitter API thing and then there was talk of well TweetDeck will stay, but we're not updating it anymore, so if it breaks, it breaks. And I was like, okay. And then Facebook changed their access thingies, and they added new meta business suite stuff for, for like business pages, and I couldn't get to the section that I needed to do on there, and I didn't know why. Like, I didn't know if I had to download an app, which I certainly wasn't going to do it wasn't worth it to me. It's not my page. Like, it's not my business. I'm just helping on the side for free. Like, <laughs> why did this have to change? And so I couldn't schedule stuff over there. And it was just becoming a fucking nightmare. And I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. And then, you know, with my dad being sick, we weren't sure. They're so desperate. They're saying, yeah, Elon's crazy. We're just stupid. Come back. <laughs> Huh? Nothing, I'm being a smart ass. What are you talking about? Nothing, I'm rambling. Okay. You're okay. Dad being sick. Okay. So, um, so, and then with my dad being so sick, what? Nothing. <laughs> what? I, I love being able to cue your, your conversation process by just repeating the last three words. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It works pretty good, hon, I hate to tell you. <laughs> sometimes it does, but. Dad being sick. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, we didn't know what was gonna happen in regards to him, so um, it was looking like he was gonna need um, us to do more for him, and I'm like, I, I can't. I was like, Lita, I don't have time to do this. Um, other things need my attention more right now, and so, yeah. And, um, he got really sick faster than I think we expected because he started to turn around and then he, like, took another nosedive. So, um, I know I had said to her, you know, I, I, I can't do this right now. <laughs> Like, I can't. Like, I gave her everything she could possibly need under the sun for what I was doing. I, it took me, like, a week. And um, I made her a full-ass guide for how I did the show. Oh, that's right. I did stuff for the show, too. I, I did post-production on the show. Um, getting the, the blog posts together and all of the links in the, the posts and everything. And set up the podcast page, updated that, you know, had stuff go to the YouTube channel. I, I was, it was basically a fucking full-time job. And, um, at the very least a part-time one, but it was a lot on top of all of my stuff. Cause then that was just for wild challenges. And then I had my own streams and my own stuff that I had to, to deal with in my own video editing. Like I never had a moment to think. So I was like, yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> and and I don't think Stir realized exactly what was going on. Because he's like, oh, well, you know, um, hopefully things will settle down. You'll be able to come back soon. I'm like, and this was when um, when my dad was real sick and we had to, like, he was entering hospice and stuff. And I'm like, yes, uh, Stir, that's not going to happen. So, um, <laughs> like, not, not going to happen. Um... I was like, yeah, that's, I'm like, we're, we're talking like end game here. We're not talking like temporary outage. Um, so you all are going to have to fucking figure it out. Because <laughs> I didn't know what our status was going to be. So I didn't know if I was going to need to go back to work right away. 
or try to go back to work right away. Um, we still haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, because we didn't know if my mom was going to get the increase on her social security. And so we have to call the lawyer on Monday and be like, Hey, what the hell? This, this denial doesn't make any sense. I think it almost looks like somebody at the law office fucked up. and restarted the application from the beginning instead of doing it as an appeal the first time. I don't know. I don't know if this is a standard denial that they try to throw at you. Um, I, I don't know. But we, we need to get a hold of the law office because their denial that came on Saturday, and of course it comes on Saturday when we can't talk to the lawyer. Um, didn't make sense to us because Russell's like, no, that's not right because the original application that they denied on was was within the time frame. And if that was the case, why didn't they say that from the very beginning? And so I don't know. We don't know what's going on. Because I thought we were in the stage where we were waiting for a court date. And then when we got another denial later, I'm like, wait, 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 what the fuck is this? Um, so, I don't fucking know what's going on. I don't know. We won't know till tomorrow. Or we might not really know much tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see what happens. anything to to aggravate and upset you know we'll see because now they're trying to say that it was denied because it wasn't within the time frame from when he had to do it and we're like no that's not right I don't know don't know So where are we at here? All right, so we need some more stuff. We have to slowly start working our way down a little bit further here. So he had his colors in here in bits and pieces. Like he had some grouped together here, some grouped together there. He's got a little bit of room in between them. Not a whole lot because of how he blended it up, but So for those that are new here, I am using acrylic yarn at the moment. Um, this is the past few shades that we did. Sorry, I'm looking at the one color and I'm trying to figure out. Oh. That's why that color looked brighter than I was expecting it to. I grabbed the wrong shade. That's alright. That's fine. Um, I have two different mustard yellows. Uh, so these are all from Paintbox. All of them, including the purple. Um, Paintbox Simply Chunky. Uh, from Lovecraft. Lovecrafts? Love's Craft. Lovecraft. Something like that. Website. Um, so... They come in like normal skeins of yarn. You can use any brand really, I think. Um, this is a cheaper, less expensive brand, so I didn't feel bad about if it didn't work out. I wasn't out a whole lot of money. Um, super soft though. It's not real itchy or anything. It's like Red Heart makes me itch. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. Like it can be soft, like the basic red heart super saver but it's a little itchy to me so i don't like using that and red heart's actually more expensive than this but you get a little bit more yarn 
These were um, smaller skeins. I'm trying to remember how much yardage was on them. Uh, well, what the fuck was it? Like around 300-ish yards. It depended on the shade as to um, how much yardage was on there. Some were a little bit more robust than others, but you know, they were on sale. What was it? Two ninety nine, a dollar something. Sometimes they've got some decent sales. They're usually three ninety nine um, a skein, which still isn't terrible. But then you know, a lot of times they're on sale for two ninety nine, and sometimes you can get them a little bit lower. Maybe two, it's two thirty six. I think is what I paid. Now that I'm thinking about it, I know that seems like an odd number. I think that's why it stuck out to me. But. Um, Not a bad brand. Oh, that's a little, that's a little thick there. I didn't get that fully attached, so I was able to pull that guy back up. Just kind of realized I'm probably leaving a little too much air in between here. A lot of spots like I want a little bit of air between them, but not everywhere. Um, I do use roving on occasion, but roving's kind of expensive for me. Um, if it fits in your budget, great. Um, and I didn't want to get into the whole dyeing the roving on my own first time out because I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work. So, um, and then, you know, I didn't know how much I was going to eat. And then that was still going to be expensive, even if I bought, like, the huge box of, um, of, like, the white roving. So I was like, uh, yeah, okay. Because it was, like, $36 for the one solid color of just the white roving. And then I was going to have to, um, dye it. And I was going to have to get the dye and, and all that mess. And I'm just like, yeah, with the cats and all. And let's just, let's just get the yarn. It made more sense for, for me. So um, you do have to do a bit of prep work when you use the acrylic yarn. Because um, it doesn't come like this. <laughs> I had to do this. So it comes as normal yarn in its little twisted form. You can use Kool-Aid to dye roving. I did not know that. Does it run at all? Like, does it stain your hands? Like, do you have to do anything to it to get it to, to keep the dye? Or does it just get stained that way, like, and keep it? Because then I was like, if I dye it, is it going to get all over my fingers when I go to use it? Because my hands sweat a lot sometimes. Especially when it's in summer. Some people use vinegar. I just got the roving wet and dyed it and that was enough. I don't okay. Alright. Well something to look into later if I decide to give that a try. But like the color range I needed. You'd soak it for a few times to make sure the color set. Okay. Yeah, because I mean the color range I needed. I was like, if I go roving, number one, when I was looking at the price of the dyed roving, I was like, oh god. Because I knew I was going to need a fair amount for what I'm doing because this is a 9 by 12 piece of felt. I've got it cordoned off in an 8 by 10 work area or approximately 8 by 10. Um, I know when a lot of people do this they do smaller things because this is a little bit of a time consuming hobby, right? So um, it's not like I mean, I know painting's not instant gratification, but it's instant compared to this. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like in the land of maybe like needlepoint or cross stitch. It takes a little while to to get where you're going, but that's fine. I mean, half the fun is making the thing. Uh, what time did she want to do dinner, by the way? Um, I was gonna order it about four fifteen. Okay. Do you need to order it at four? Because you does she still want you to go to Sonic? Yeah, I suppose I could order it for. Okay. I'm just asking, I don't know. 
Um, so I mean, yeah, like half the fun is doing the thing, but um, like I was having trouble picturing the amount of roving that they were saying to um to how much I was gonna need because I was seeing like some shades were like five ninety nine per shade and it was like oh two point three ounces and I'm like huh I'm like two point three ounces of what what is that what is that in vol like I, visually I could not compute or visualize what two point three ounces or two ounces of roving was gonna look like and I'm like um yeah, but like, how thick is that? How much is that? Um, yeah, it it's not it's not a lot. I think it's I think it equates to um, to these is what I or or close to it. Maybe a little bit more, but not much more. Maybe maybe one and a half of these. Um, this is just like a, a floss bag is what these came in. This was a um, multicolor pack that I had picked up when I first got everything to see if I even wanted to do this because like I was excited about it. I had seen videos of it on on YouTube and I was like, yeah, I want to try it. But you know, seeing someone else do it and then you actually doing the thing, you might not feel like that after you've actually done the thing. So. Um, I didn't want to get too deep into it before I knew if I wanted to do the thing. And when I was first seeing other people doing it, I had heard them talk about, oh, doing the acrylic yarn, and then I started looking into the acrylic yarn after I saw how much the roving was going to be, and I was like, oh god, for the amount that I need, <laughs> for the amount that I need, I, I can't do the roving, <laughs> that's gonna, that's not gonna happen. Um, so. I still have a whole bunch of, of these because um, there wasn't enough to do a full project for what I was doing. It was more for like the figurine stuff and we do figurines occasionally, but um, I prefer doing this and I think I fused up maybe two or three shades of this. I still have a ton of it, but it's like not enough to, to do a whole thing. Because if I run out of the color, then I don't have it for the next one. And um, I can't reorder these by the color. It was just a bag of X number of colors. And I swear some of them were duplicated. Just ever so slightly. Like the shades just slightly off. Like maybe it was a dye lot issue. Um, but I swear some of them were the same color. Just ever so slightly different. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I was like, yeah, let's let's look at the yarn, and then I started using Big Twist Value. That's that's the name of it from Joann's. It's one of their house brands. I gotten a whole bunch of that on sale for like a dollar ninety nine a skein. Skein. I was like, and it was a lot on there. I was like, yeah, sweet, fantastic. I think I got like a New Year's sale or something. And then I was back there looking at new colors when I was gonna get some more stuff, and noticed that some of my older colors that quick had been discontinued, and I was like really and then you know they weren't on sale anymore either and so that was a, a budget concern and I was like mm, right well this says mustard but it looks like buttercup I know it's not because I have buttercup here but um you know I was like that ain't it so then I started trying to find um this is buttercup same brand paint box chunky uh, simply chunky and uh then I found Lovecraft when I was trying to, you know, find acrylic yarn, and I came across Paintbox, and I'm like, that's a decent sale price, and I had been watching it for a while, um, and it seems to be pretty consistently on sale, like, base price is $3.99, and, um, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Not much, what's up? Can you open one of those containers of the buckets behind my monitor? Containers? The green buckets? The what? The green buckets, the cat litter buckets. Oh yeah, they're bound. I need one of the balls of yarn out of there. It doesn't oh, matter okay. what color. I just can't reach it from here. Okay. So, I mean, two ninety nine or three ninety nine base price. Not bad. Um, I they've been consistently on sale for a while for two ninety nine, 
and then I got mine for 236 I think it was a Black Friday sale or coming into Black Friday or something so it's not bad and um, you do get quite a bit of fluff since it's the chunky so there's a little bit more diameter there um, they have they've been out of stock on a lot of the colors in the simply chunky but they've also got um, a uh, a super simply chunky and then they've got an Aaron and I don't know the Aaron looks a lot thinner but I'm pretty sure you could still do it with that it just might not go as far but they've got a couple other less expensive brands on there that I'd be willing to try I'm trying to remember what the other one was called I think it began with an S special masters special something I can't remember special classic yeah, so I mean, it, you wouldn't get as far. Etsy has some better deals than that, but it still might be pricey. The yarn, though, the acrylic it has a different sheen to it. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit shiny. Um, the, the roving can be a bit matter. It's almost, it's not like a gloss, maybe like a satin, if you're like comparing it to like wall paint. Maybe like a satin or like an eggshelly kind of thing. Satin might be better description. Lost my scissors. But yeah, I mean, you can see that the diameter on the strands on the Aaron's a little bit thinner. Um, I haven't tried to fluff the Aaron. I'm sure it would work just as fine. You just probably wouldn't get as much out of it. Since these are chunkier, I was like, oh, well, you know, it's a little bit thicker. So I'll probably get a little bit more fluff out of it. At least that was my thinking behind it. I don't know if that's true or not. Could just be my skewed logic. What is touching me? Something is touching me. When you have hair that sheds constantly, I can never tell if it's a random piece of fluff that got away. Or if it's my own hair that like fell out of my head and is touching my arm and I'm like, what is, what is happening? And we've got the dogs. And if you have a dog brush or two, you can card the fluff a bit once you unravel it. Yeah, so I, I just, I cut the strands. You know, eh, not very long because I, I hold it. Um, some people put it on like a, a self-healing cutting mat. Um, some people put it on cardboard. Um, you can use dog hair. You want to get some dog fur and spin it again. Yeah, I was thinking of... Um, we we buzz the boys down in the summer. Or as it gets to be summer. Because they get hot spots and stuff. So, um, I was actually contemplating taking that and... Um, and like fluffing like a key sape or something. You can you can sell that really I mean they're not really long-haired guys they're they're really short hair but I didn't even think you could sell that huh Why couldn't you? I don't know I just never thought about it it just wasn't something that that entered my brain of something that was doable where's my brush there it is excuse me flamingo Kind of in the way there. Blend it with little too. Huh. Yeah, I got one of the sticker brushes. Um, I didn't think about getting two and carding with them. That might save my fingers a bit better. Because I, I ripped the shit out of my thumb and my... Mostly my thumb. <laughs> Don't do this over top of your pants, okay? Anything you care about, if you use like the like the undercoat brushes with the little metal teeth, don't use your pants or any fabric or any surface that you give two flying fucks about to do this on top of. It will scratch it. It will destroy it. Um, there's a discolored spot here on my my protectors right there. Yeah, it like wraps around to this side here. That is from this. I was like, oh, I can put these on my fingers and um, my fingers won't get shredded. Cool. Um, my finger didn't get shredded, but I almost shredded these to oblivion, so. 
and we need these because my hand-eye coordination is not always the greatest so yeah be careful with that thing it's not as bad as this it's not as dangerous as this but it'll mess you up <laughs> not a toy that sucker hurts <laughs> I have uh, caught my finger just so on that sticker brush a couple of times. Oh boy! I can only fluff like three different. If I'm doing a full bag, like I'm trying to do a full, full, full restock on my colors, right? This is just a sandwich size Ziploc. I know it's hard to tell sizes because I'm a little zoomed in. Um, it's easier for me to have the stuff already to go and I can just grab the color and, and do it. But um, when I get a yarn order, I'm trying to fluff it all so that I can put it away and put its color name with its label in there so I know if I need to reorder it, what I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> I can only do like three different colors in a sitting. Because if I do any more than that, my thumb just gets shredded to shit. But that's because of how I do it. I know if I did it like with cardboard backing underneath of it, I'd be saving my fingers. But I can't stand the sound of the scritchy of the, the metal teeth on that comb hitting the cardboard. It makes my ears want to bleed. My ears are very sound sensitive. I hate it. I hate hearing stuff that like most people, they, they don't even notice it. I'm like, what the fuck is that noise? Half the time Russell doesn't notice it. I'm like, what is that? He goes, what is what? I was like, there's a fucking hum and I don't know where it's coming from. It doesn't sound like it's coming from in the house though. It sounds like it's coming from outside. Like I can hear them doing work like down the street like make us up it's horrible there's um a car wash like three three or four doors down from us three or four lots down from us i guess um and it's across the street and a lot of people around here like to go mudding in their atvs and their I don't know, are they 4x4s? Four I don't know what the fuck they're called. The, the little, the, the like ATVs, but they've got like, like they're two or three, four person things. They've got like doors on them and the roll cages and all that shit. Um, so, like, like an off-road golf cart, kind of. <laughs> and, um, and then there's farm vehicles and work trucks and a lot of the roads like the the back roads going up the mountain and stuff um some people live off of the mountain dirt roads and things around here um they've uh they get a lot of vehicles in this car wash with, where they're they're hosing the mud off their vehicles right so it seems like once a month if not more depending on what traffic's looked like coming in and out of this car wash. And it, you know, it's just like one of the old car washes. They've got an automatic run drive through thing, but it's it hasn't worked since we've moved here. I don't know if it ever did. I guess it did at one point, but they never run it. Um, so, you know, just like the brick bays that you pull into, you know, nothing fancy. And, uh, it seems like once a month, if not twice a month, we're sitting here and I'm like, what the fuck is that noise? And he goes, what are you talking about? I was like, there's a noise. There's something running. I can hear some kind of machinery running. It's eight o'clock at night. What the fuck is running at eight o'clock at night? And then he'll start to hear it. And then you'll hear like, like a squeaky belt or something suddenly kick in and it's like, Wah! and I'm like, what the fuck? And it just goes on for hours. And I'm like, And then the one night, while we heard the noise, we decided to go for a walk, and we walked past there. There's this little tiny machine that almost looks like a little tiny 
Uh, excavator? Like, not, not big enough for somebody to sit in, necessarily, but... I don't even know how to describe this thing. Like, it just kind of looked like a tiny mini excavator, like the height, like three feet high or something, sitting on the ground. And they've got one of these big ass metal mesh drains open that's in the middle of, of the car wash bay. And it's scooping out mud. And I was like, oh God, you're going to do this all the time, aren't you? Because I guess the drain was backing up or something and they had to clean them out. And I'm just like, oh no. And yep, now that I've heard the sound, I can't unhear the sound. And I know every time they're down there doing it. It's just, it gets in my ears and it won't leave. And oh, and they're, they're not like just there for like a half an hour or an hour. No, they're there for a couple of hours. And I was just like, oh, why? I'm like, can you stop now? Because my ears, man, can't take it. Can't do it, man. Ugh. And I'd love to know what I'm allergic to around here. I mean, I've always had some kind of allergy and sinus issues, even when we were in New Jersey. Um, that was nothing compared to down here. Our first six months here, I was just sick. <laughs> my my sinuses were so bad. My, my head was just so congested. I could hardly breathe through my nose. It was awful. Um, I found a nose spray that worked and I was like, cool, I can breathe. And then it seemed like I had to use more as time was going on or use it more often to, to be able to breathe, my body was like, huh, nope, 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 you're going to suffer. And I'm like, no, the thing was working and now it's not working as much. And I was slowly becoming addicted to the nose spray. Um, it was awful. I was like, oh my God, I had to stop using it once I realized, you know, I was using it way more than it was telling me. I should be in like the, the time frames and stuff and I was like oh this is bad I'm like I have to stop using this um it was an over counter the thing uh thing too and I was like I, I recognized what was happening I'm like yeah no we need to not do that um so I just kind of have to suffer along with it every so often. Like I can do like kids allergy medication, like the liquid stuff, because I it works faster. And um, but I can't take a lot of it because it knocks me on my ass. And um, it just it I just want to sleep, <laughs> so I can't I can't do that. But um, sometimes I just fucking suffer and deal with it. And other times if it's really bad and I, I need to function to some degree, I will take just a little tiny bit of it. Just enough to get my body to start behaving. But we went to Fayetteville the other day. I think I said this already a couple days ago. But we went to Fayetteville. And um, I, was, I was okay. I didn't notice anything going on with me while we were there. And we're still, I know people will probably look at us funny, but we, we, we're still wearing a mask in the store because, you know, Russell's anxiety issues. And there's still, COVID's still there. And I don't want to get it. And I don't want to get the flu either. Um, I get horrible sinus infections sometimes that I am just completely out of commission and can't function for, for like two or three weeks. It, it's awful. Fever, snot, coughing, then it turns into a chest cold, and I'm. I used to get chronic bronchitis um, all the time when I was younger, and I, it's not fun. It turned into pneumonia one pneumonia one time, and I don't want to deal with that shit. So you know, fine. I'll, I'll wear the, I'll wear the mask when we're in a crowded store. I don't care. Um, you know, lots of other countries do it all the time, like whatever. And, uh, had the mask on in the store 
came out, took it off, and we got in the car, and didn't really notice any difference. So I didn't have the mask on when we were in the car, and we got to the outer edge of the city. Like, we were just starting to come into, like, the inner part of our town. Immediately, my throat started itching. Um, my ears started itching. My eyes started watering. And I was just like, oh my god, what the fuck is happening? Instantly, my allergies flipped their shit. And I was like, oh god. What the fuck? And then, as soon as we got into the house, I'm, I must have sneezed like five or six times in a row. Couldn't fucking breathe. I'm like, it's not running everywhere. I'm like, oh my god. My eyes were tearing so bad I could hardly see. I'm like, what the fuck? And, uh, <laughs> like, is it just the trees? It's got to be a specific tree or something that's in this area. I mean, I already know that I've noticed I've had rougher days when they've cut the hay fields, but they hadn't cut any yet. And the tree pollen's been through the roof lately, and I'm just like, oh, what is happening? I'm just snipping this to a size that I want, that's all. That's what I'm doing with this, so. I ended up having to take some uh, allergy medicine. We had to give the dog some of it, too, because he was making this god-awful noise. I, they, I think it's like a reverse sneeze for them. Kind of like post nasal drip stuck in your throat kind of sound when you're you make when you're trying to make it go away um and uh, like his whole body was like vibrating when he was doing it we thought there was something like wrong we thought we were gonna make a vet visit and i'm like oh, i don't want to spend that much money for something that might be stupid and that we can just deal with so i talked russell into letting me try some benadryl and um, it seemed to help him a little bit, but he kept doing it, and I'm like, like it, it calmed it down. And then when, when the X brand Benadryl wore off, like we weren't even giving him a full doggy dose. I was giving him like half of a doggy dose for his weight because I didn't know what it was gonna do. And um, and he was terrified of me after I gave it to him because it tastes nasty. You know, you don't know what what's happening, what it's supposed to do. You can't explain to him, yeah, your throat's gonna be numb. He doesn't know what numb means. So, um, we had a, some eyedroppers laying around. Thank God we did, because that made it so much easier to get the liquid into him, because all I had was the liquid. We were contemplating going and picking up, um, some, like, little kid's chewables that we could just, like, shove in his mouth. But um, he's a terrible pill taker. And I was like, yeah, but the liquid's going to work faster. So we had that debate. <laughs> and, um, it did finally calm it down enough where he stopped with the noise. Where he could sort of function. And uh, he hasn't, he's made the sound a couple of times since last week. But it hasn't been never ending like the one day it was just hours and we're like what is happening like russell thought he might have just had like a piece of grass stuck in his throat or something because he was eating grass outside and then it just kept continuing and continuing and continuing and it was getting worse and i was just like yeah no we have to do something so we, we decided we'll, we'll try the allergy medicine first maybe it'll help with his hot spot itchy I mean, they're not really that long-haired of dogs, but his fur is thick. So. We've noticed that he's been struggling with the hot spots more and more as he's been getting older. So we can't be without the tea tree oil <laughs> hot spot spray. That is a must-have in the house at all times. As soon as we're starting to get low, I'm like, we need to get more. But we try to get a big bottle of it. We got the cats a bubble gun. <laughs> Russell went to the store without me, and he came home. And I'm like, what is this? And I'm sitting there like, you bought a bubble gun? I'm like, 
What, for the cat? He goes, yeah, because Cal loves bubbles. Sometimes the dog, one of the dogs will chase them, but other times they're just like, meh. Now that they're getting older, they don't care. Um, the bubble gun makes a noise, though. And when we first tried to use it with them, all the cats were freaked out about the noise, so they didn't want to come near us when we had the bubble gun out. I'm like, really, guys? Like, it's just the bubble gun. It's okay. But now that Cal's gotten used to the sound, he's starting to, um, to attack the bubbles. And it's been working as a good distraction when he's up to something he shouldn't be. But we need to see what they have for cat toys because um, my mom is obsessed with buying those stockings at Christmas for for the cats that um, that you know have the multitude of different toys in them, like the little mice and the crinkle balls, and you know. But in them, there's these little feather boa things on a stick. And Cal, Little, and My My love these things. Um, but Cal, Cal's obsessed with feathers. He's definitely a hunter. <laughs> um, so we couldn't leave him unsupervised with it because um, he would rip the feathers out and destroy it. Well, we forgot that it was on the floor in the mother-in-law's room and when we slapped the cats out one day so that the older cat, because Mai Mai and Cow don't get along, he won't leave her be and then she cowers in the corner and then it turns into an all-out fight and we can't separate them. So it's just easier to rotate them out and who's gonna be out socializing right now and um, so while she was out having her socializing time he was in the other room taking a nap we thought and then I heard the, a bell jingle and I'm like what the fuck he was playing with the feather stick all on his own and I was like oh okay I forgot that was down but then he was behaving and playing with it so I was like you know what I don't care you can destroy it like you're not getting into other trouble and knocking stuff off of things and and getting into shit you shouldn't be you can have the feathery stick that's fine well apparently now the old cat that doesn't like him also likes this feathery stick and she's been playing with it on her own and bringing it up to Russell to play with her when he's trying to sleep because <laughs> he's been sleeping in there with her so she's not alone all night because she gets mad and um so she keeps jumping up with it dragging it up onto the bed and we've never seen her cat that much before she um because we don't know how long she had been on the street before we ended up with her and uh, she was very reserved like she didn't want to play or anything or she didn't remember how to play or didn't want to drop her guard down to play but this thing she She's more than willing to play in front of us and Russell with it and wants her to uh, play with him or wants him to play with her. There we go. And uh, except Russell messaged me last night when he was in there with her and he goes, hey, we need to get another one of these because this one's like destroyed. And I was like, oh, okay, let's see what I can do. We found a, a plush one on Amazon but it didn't ship from Amazon it shipped from somebody else and we've not had the best luck with the third party shippers from them like one package of brushes that I was tracking that was like super cheap and I'm like oh okay I'll get that we didn't realize it wasn't shipping from Amazon until after we bought it and we were tracking it I think it actually came from China <laughs> Because it was delivered to somebody's personal name and address in like Alabama or Louisiana or something and then it got shipped to me and it was so bizarre and it took like two months to get here and I'm just like really 
because it, it didn't necessarily say where it was coming from it just said it was coming from like this one business so i guess they shipped it to their state's contact or something and it was very strange and i was just like okay i mean i did eventually get them but it had been so long i think that was the one set of brushes where it was supposed to like take a month and it had taken two months and we messaged the seller and we're like hey um do you know where my stuff is i i feel like they may have refunded us on that i'm not sure they may have and then we got them in the end anyway like a month later than we were supposed to it was just very odd and we were very confused and i was just like i don't know what the fuck is happening So I'm just kind of putting in these tree shapes. I'm trying to leave a little bit of space in between them in spots so it doesn't just look like a full ass wall of color. So you all can do this however you want to do it. I mean, everybody's going to interpret stuff differently. Oh shit, what color did I say this was going to be back in here? Because I've got both of these. I've got light green and I've got lime green. Oh, hey, we never... Uh, I never brought up the reference photo. So that's kind of what similar... Coconut turtle is going to join us for a second. Um, that's kind of similar to at the upper corner of what it's going to look like in the end. That was our sample sketch when we were working out the colors and stuff. I'm trying to find... There it is. I couldn't find where it was. Okay. Ah. Ow. Stab my boob. Alright. Okay, so... I have the lime green written in there background trees, mustard yellow, blood orange, deeper. Okay, so lime green is in the background trees. Okay, cool. All right. Put our test subject down there. All right, let's grab our lime green, because I've got all the colors that I had planned on using on this one pulled out next to me. Got them clipped on this curtain. So I have them all at the fingertips. So maybe these guys just didn't get frost bitten yet. Frost touched. Oh, we started to plant our seeds this week. We still have a planter box that we need to clean out. But that looked like it was going to be a little more involved and Russell had already done a bit of starting to get a little warm out so he's like yeah I'm gonna come in for a little bit so all of my elephant ears didn't make it or at least we don't think they did were all the bulbs bad did you pull them all out or did you leave them in the buckets hey mm -hmm. did you pull all the bulbs out from the elephant ears in those uh, yeah, I dug, I dug up everything but the ones that were in the front planner because I haven't dug the front planner up yet. Okay, were the other ones all bad? Oh yeah, no. Okay. Good. Free job. Yeah, we were supposed to winterize them, but we didn't think that other people that had planted them, that we saw a couple at some other houses that we walked by, we didn't think they really bothered winterizing them. So we were going to experiment and see if we really needed to dig them all back up and bring them back in for the winter. Apparently we did. Because these ones were in above ground containers, not in the ground. But we also had that obnoxiously unusual cold snap. Where we had like the minus 23 degree wind chill at one point. Very unusual for here. I'll take losing the elephant ear bulbs over a busted pipe any day. 
so we didn't have to deal with any pipe issues so yay I'll I'll deal with losing the elephant ears over that because we didn't they didn't really grow the summer coming into last summer coming into the weird ass winter we had because um, we were in the middle of a drought and uh, we didn't want to a waste the water on them and B we couldn't really afford to jack the water bill up at the moment so we're like yeah the um so this year I found some ornamental grass it's kind of like a bluish green tint or a greenish blue tinted I don't know it's kind of like frosted but kind of it's like a weird it's not really like a sagey green it's a little more blue than sage but it's not like sky blue or anything um it's kind of like how they called old ladies with silver hair blue hair which i never quite understood um i'm like but it's not blue <laughs> it's silver <laughs> but it was like it's just what they did i don't know but um we're gonna see how this ornamental grass does it's supposed to be drought resistant so we'll see it it was gonna work for the light where it was gonna go because it's not full sun all day where we're putting it oh um when we did happen to go into Hobby Lobby I went a little crazy they had a was it five foot Russell said it was six foot it might be six foot I might be underestimating I think it's like five point something foot uh, metal flamingo statue so that's on the front porch we had taken a picture of it but the blinds are kind of destroyed in the window behind it and it looked really bad so I need to take a different photo so that's on our front porch now and they had so much flamingo stuff they had a wooden flamingo sign in my we, we got that my mom bought me another flamingo statue because it was a 40% off so that's the only reason why we ended up with the metal flamingo sculpture and I got this guy. I'm still in the process of base painting him. I dropped the paintbrush and uh, I smeared it on the face. He, he's he's pretty big. I'm going to tissue paper art him. Um, he won't fit in my camera view though. So I can't really record it. My workspace isn't big enough. <laughs> um, to what the fuck was that noise? Maybe it was Momo. I swear to God, I'm hearing phantom piggy guinea pig noises every so often. Like, I just swear I heard a ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. And then it was gone. Maybe Momo's dreaming. Sometimes he makes the weirdest noises when he's dreaming. Like, the guinea pigs are haunting me. It was bad enough we had corn on the cob the other day on the grill and I was cleaning the corn and I'm looking at all the, the husk and the silk and I'm like, oh, I don't have any pigs to give this to. That's so sad. I was like, oh, this is going to go to waste now. We would give them all of that. If you make these too thin, they kind of just melt into the background and just kind of look like a line. So you want them to have a little bit of... fluff to them. Just a little bit. So we'll see how this one goes. I've not done this one at all before, but I definitely feel a bit more confident with this one than I did the last one. The last one was just crazy. I still have mixed feelings about season or uh, episode five that we did. Still really not too sure how I feel about that one, even though it's done. 
one of the more odd ones from this season. So there's 13 episodes in this season. I think that's about normal. I think he does 12 to 13. It might be 13 on all of them. I could just be trying to play both sides of that line because I can't remember. But it seems to be about there. Although I did notice on 13 in this season, he's got Steve doing it. And that's fine. I think that's, you know, he started bringing in um, guest painters or certified instructors just to, I guess, show what they could do. I will say, I do enjoy, um, oh, what the fuck is his name? I never remember his name. And it's, it's sad that I don't remember his name, because I, it's not fair, and I should. Um, hang on, I'll tell you what. Him. Who is it? Is it Nick? Is it Hank? I always get his name wrong. I don't want the ad. Pause that. Who is it? Nick. Nick Hankins. Ha! <laughs> I had both names. Oh, goodness. So. I do enjoy him doing it. Um, I mean, I like to watch Bob too, but I like that that they're with the with the unrestricted time of YouTube now. Not like it was before um, with television. You know, PBS. You had your half hour show block unless you were like Sesame Street or something, and um, you know. They, they were hard tied into that, like, 25 minutes or whatever because of, you know, um, not really advertising, but, you know, trying to get the word out to, oh, make donations and all of that. So, um, you know, they don't have to worry about being within a rigid time block anymore now with the power of YouTube. So, I enjoy it that when Nick is either doing past Bob ones in in his interpretation of it um, that he's able to take his time and slow it down and go into a little bit more explanation of stuff or um, you know, just not like buzz right through it. it I, I like that, that they're able to slow it down and you can see more of, you know, all that's, that's happening and things and get a better feel for it. Well, our forest is a little sparse here, but that's okay. to replace this mat soon. Maybe it's in the next couple of months. As we get our finances sorted. But hey, at least we got the house, pax ta house taxes paid for the year already. So that was great. Well, we can start saving up for next year. I mean, the property tax here isn't too bad to begin with, but still, one less thing to uh, worry about. 
Do I have any more of that coming out? So this mustard and the buttercup are pretty close to one another. I really wanted daffodil. Um, they didn't have the shade though, they ran out of it. And I don't think they brought it back. Not in the simply chunky. I have to stop and think because there's super simply chunky and then there's simply chunky in the paint box brand. But oh yeah, if you guys see any yarn sales. Um, let me know. Uh, you know, especially if it's acrylic yarn. Like, I don't need all the fancy, like, I'll, like, I don't know. I've never used alpaca. I don't know if I'm, I would be allergic to it or not. I doubt I would be. Um, like, it doesn't have to be the expensive, like, wool blend stuff. Just the acrylic yarn is fine. If you see any yarn sales, let me know. What, what are your favorite brands of yarn to use for whatever you're doing? Like what are your... My voice is echoing off of my drink. I can hear it, unless there's just that much fluid in my ears. I kept picking up a metallic ping coming back at me. It was starting to bother me. But I'm not I'm not dead set committed to using any specific brand. I'm I'm all for sales and shit. Especially, you know, I'm not wearing this, so it doesn't matter if it's a little itchy or not to my skin. I mean, I would use Super Saver for this, but Super Saver's gotten so expensive. More expensive than this stuff. I haven't found any good sales on it. But yeah, feel free to hit me up on a... Uh, Twitter or whatever. I'm working on another one. I haven't had time to pick recording back up on it. I would like to though. So I probably will soon. Where we are working on the one for the embroidery hoop. I was originally trying to save that one for stream, but I couldn't find a good time to do it, so I just was like, fuck it, we'll just record it, that's fine. So I'm working on that. I'm working on a gouache painting that is similar, or it's the same reference photo as the embroidery hoop needle felt that I'm working on. I really wanted to paint it and needle felt it just to see what it would look like. I'm doing it both ways. I really liked the reference photo. But yeah, I think we're gonna tissue paper art that that flamingo sign hang up wall art thingy. So I'm in the process of base coating him. I had to gesso him. And boy was that wood thirsty. <laughs> I'm glad we decided to gesso it. And uh You okay, Momo? He just went prancing out of the bedroom or came prancing back in the bedroom. And, uh, very suddenly. <laughs> so, um, I still have to fix the beak, get the base coat on that, and fix the eye. I base coat underneath when I do the tissue paper art with a color similar. Oh. What's wrong, Momo? You have to potty? He's gurring like crazy. Oh. He's excited about something. 
we take you out real quick to daycare or get you for dinner? Yeah, I'll start wrapping up here in a few minutes since we're getting ready mm -hmm. for dinner. Cause, um, part of the deal was with my mom helping us a little bit more with groceries was that um, I'm going to be cooking dinner for her because she was starting to get into this thing where she didn't want to cook for herself and she was just like living off of cereal and toast and I'm like, no. Well, to be fair, cooking just for herself, unlike you, she didn't really feel like it. Yeah, but I didn't really have a choice, so I well, had to eat. Yeah, but you're... Me and your mom are the same way. We both live out of the box if we could. If there was stuff that I could afford and live out a box with, I would, but <laughs> I just, there wasn't anything that appealed to me to do it that way, so. And it was, the stuff I did want was expensive, so I was like, yeah, that's not happening. So, um, so I was like, well, I have to cook dinner anyway for me, so, you know, I might as well cook for you too, because we ate similar stuff. So I, um, I make her dinner now, and, but tonight she, I said to her last night, I said, okay, so what do you want for dinner tomorrow night? I know we just ate, but I need to know if I need to take something out of the freezer now or if it can wait until tomorrow. And, um, I gave her a couple of options that we could do today, and she's like, cause I said, well, I can make pizza, and she goes, well, how about we get takeout pizza tomorrow? And I was like... I don't know what your finances are at. That's up to you, since you're the one that would be paying for it. Um, she goes, yeah, let's do that. And that's, that way you'll have a break from cooking. I'm like, well, Russell grilled the other night. I didn't technically cook. And she goes, yeah, but you've been cooking every night. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I would be regardless because I still have to eat. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't really have the luxury of having a quick freezer meal I can just throw in the oven most of the time. That shit's expensive, and I don't really do the TV dinners. They, they taste weird to me a lot of the time. Like, sometimes I can do, like, the Hungry Man, like, fried chicken patty, but a lot of times they just, they taste weird. A lot of them taste rubbery to me, and I just can't, can't handle the texture. So, and, and then... I thought about it for a minute and I went back and found her. I was like, you do understand that when I said pizza, because we're going to get pizza from Casey's, that I said I, I meant I could make pizza from scratch. She goes, oh, I know. It's like, okay. I was not implying that you had to buy the pizza, but we also have to run to Walmart in a little bit or try to. Oh, well, we're going to try tonight after my duck goes for dinner. Yeah, that's fine. Because uh, we need to pick up the four extra bricks while they still have them for the fire pit. And, um,. I need some groceries from, from Walmart that don't make sense to get from Sam's. I kind of feel like we need an orange tree or two down in here, a little bit lower maybe. So I am leaving a little bit more space in between these guys than he necessarily did. Cause it just it it was sad that like almost all of that color that he put in there gets just eaten up. Cause you can see a little bit on the edges right now, but it's gonna vanish because he's gonna put like big ash trees covering this and with very little in between these guys, and I felt bad. I was like, oh. Like, that was quite an interesting color to pick for a sky, and then it just ends up being, like, foggy ground background in between the trees, so that was kind of a change I did. So you're heading out to work? All right, sir, you have a good one. Careful. Stay safe. And may your charging phone cable thingy arrive with speed. I'm not going to do a whole lot of orange down in here, just, just a little bit here and there. Oh. So. 
still trying to figure out Da Vinci. Um, I'm slowly working on it. It's very different. It's a lot more sensitive than uh, um, Adobe was. And it seems a little more complicated than Adobe, but we're, we're, we're figuring it out. It's taking me just, I'm a little bit slower with it than I was with Adobe, so. Eventually, we'll get that other speed felt put together. I need to do a recorded session in Planet Zoo, since we only got one of our 13 grasslands animals in. Um, I have to see what the generator gives us next. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze in an extra live stream this week with Zoo. I just don't know. Um, husband didn't do a live stream this week with Zoo because our friend was off from work unexpectedly. They've like they're pissed off at him because he's not available like two or three days a week because he's going to college and Walmart has a thing where if you're going to school you know they'll they'll work with your school schedule but apparently the scheduler's pissed off at him because of the days that he's not available so to punish him they would like cut his hours drastically which seems stupid but um, Walmart schedulers can be like that sometimes I've known a couple in my time. Um, and uh, so I think one week he only had four hours. I'm like, really? Kid's brakes need to get replaced in his car. I say kid because he's a bit younger than Russell and I. I'm not sure how old he is, but I know he's definitely younger than us. I want to say he's at least 10 years younger than us. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe. Alright, so let's see. Where do I want... Are you, are you yellow or are you are mustard? I think... I don't know which color you are. I think you're mustard. Okay. Yeah, that looks a little bit better with a little bit of the orange flecked in down below here. Oh, I got a little bit of our lime green tagged in on that one. Not quite sure how that happened, but that's okay. That's okay. So I probably should have them overlapping a bit more sideways, but I kind of like this openness happening up here and again Bob says to make it your world so that's what we're gonna do we hear you Bob and we're working on it we are gonna do the things Trying to get a shape here for what I'm looking for. Because we're gonna have some stuff happening down in here. Yes? Let me double check our. Yeah, so we're gonna have like trees and stuff and shrubbery covering a good portion of this bottom area. probably be cutting off a little bit of that 
the bottom tree so we don't really need to come all the way down to this bottom edge area. Now I didn't end up putting any of the red in. I was thinking about it and he put just a faint amount in but he only really did it in the one spot and I was like eh, I don't know I just feel like if it's really only in the one spot it's just gonna get the vision stuck to it so I was like yeah no alright so um are you going there first or second to get the um, to get the sticks, sweetie? Huh? Are you going there first or second to get the sticks, or does she not want them now? Uh, I think I'm gonna stop by the first thing I was. Like I didn't know if she still wanted them. Last I heard. Okay. You talked to her more recently uh, than I did. Any? She was getting them for all of us to share, I thought. Okay. I don't know. She said she just wanted one, so I didn't know what size I should get. Get the medium. Cat. Cat. What cat? What cat? What cat? I don't understand the cat. He just said something about more cat and walked out the door. But I don't... Am I supposed to feed the outside cat? Was there a cat in his way? I don't understand. I'm not comprehending. And he didn't clarify as he walked out the door. Right. I guess that's just gonna be a mystery until he gets back. Might have been a cat sitting in front of the door in the house, not the outside cat. Outside cat has a very healthy fear of our fire pit and our charcoal girl, so at least we don't have to worry about him getting into trouble when those are lit. We're always out there with it. Because, you know, fire shouldn't be left unattended. But, uh, I looked up when we were grilling the other night and he was laying at the end of our driveway in the backyard and I'm like, hello. And he wouldn't walk up until I was between him and the grill and I was like, okay, I mean that's annoying, but good, I don't have to worry about you getting into trouble. We still don't know if he actually belongs to somebody. Or if he is a full-on stray. Because he's kind of friendly with us to a point. Like, he rolls around on his back and stomach up in the air and mowing. And sometimes he starts purring and he kind of wants pets, but you can only touch him in certain places. And he'll like come up and jump in your lap if there's room and he'll just sit and chill for a while. So he's not that terrified of us, but at the same time. Other times we'll get a little squirrely about stuff, so kinda have to be on guard with him sometimes because I never know what the fuck he's just suddenly going to decide to do. I certainly don't want to piss him off. Tomorrow, 
We have every intention of being back working on this. Um, I don't know what kind of mental state the husband's going to be in after we talk to the lawyer. Or after he talks to the lawyer, so I might be a little late showing up. If I have to cancel, I'll let you guys know on Twitter. I don't foresee me needing to cancel. He seemed to handle this letter better than I did. Um, but we need to make sure that they got a copy. And we need to be like, well, what the fuck do they mean here because of X, Y, and Z and get some answers from them. But, uh, I don't foresee needing to cancel entirely tomorrow. And I'm still planning on being here. But if shit happens, I will let you all know. I'll try to get up early enough to see what he needs before we get started. He might not need anything. I woke up extra early today, I don't know why. I'm like sitting here, I'm like, oh, why am I so tired? I'm like, dumbass. You were up like an hour and a half sooner than you had to be. I'm like, yeah, that, that might do it. Work on getting this guy tapped into here. So this is like more of a suggestion of tree in his painting, so that's why we're just kind of putting these little blippy doos of color in here. But we didn't do bad today, the amount of talking I did. <laughs> we got our, our sky, let me just, oh, that's, that's quite an interesting image on the backside. But we got our background sky finished being filled in, working on getting our tree guys kind of put in here. So like the background's gonna kind of come in and then like the bottom edge of these are probably gonna get lost a bit. Um, so uh, over here I might try to come down a little bit higher, I might not come down quite so low. And uh, we'll see though, we'll see. I know it looks like there's a lot of air in between, but it's fine. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. So tomorrow we're going to try to be back to get some more work done on this guy. I know it doesn't look like much now, but um, you know, we are aiming for something similar to this. It's going to be a very green heavy one um, for what he did here. And we'll try to see if we can sort of make the sketch happen. The, the real messy sketch happen on here. We'll try, we'll do our best um, and see. But yeah, so that's it for today. Let me see, do we have anybody? Um, nobody that I'm real familiar with that I've had the chance to preview their channel. So we'll just stop here for today. Thank you guys for hanging out and chatting with me and keeping me company. And um, have a good rest of your evening. Hope your weekend finishes out well. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully with a gentle start to your Monday. So until we're together again, friends, have a good one.